Without further ado, I need a mallet or something like that. Let's get today's meeting of the Velshi Band Book Club uh, started. I'm joined now by the actor and author Malik Pancholi to talk about his award-winning debut novel, today's Band Book Club feature, The Best At It. Malik, great to have you here. Thank you for being with us. You've, got, you've had another novel out since this, but you seem as surprised as everybody else because it's, you're, this, The Best At It is not controversial. No. Uh, in fact, you know, it's so interesting because I, in the writing of this book, I talked with my editor about the fact that, you know, for this age group, teachers and librarians are still the gatekeepers of these kinds of books. Yes. So you write to a, to a sensibility that they're going to have to put this in the classroom and they're going to be aware of that. I mean, the kid in The Best Edit, he's 12 and he's beginning to develop a crush on another kid in his class, which you so eloquently uh, spoke about, Justin Emery, his, his next door neighbor. But there's no, um, it's an awareness. And for him, it's also a complicated realization that he doesn't know what this feeling sure. is. You know, he, there's a sense of like, do I want to be like Justin? Do I just admire Justin? But then why can't I stop staring at his biceps? Yeah. And so for me, that's a, a conversation point around something the kids do, but it's not controversial. These kids are not engaging in any kind of like sexual behavior, for example. Uh, it's a super innocent, I think, innocent read. And yet, I think speaks to a lot of the feelings that I was going through in middle school. When I go on book tour and I visit middle schools, uh, it's a lot of the things that kids today are experiencing and often don't get to see in a book or don't have the, uh, the language to talk about still. And so that's, you know, that's why I wrote this book is to give 12 year olds language that took me, by the way, yeah. <laughs> into my 20s to be able to, to talk about. What, what does that do? What's, if you're arguing with somebody who says, I don't want my kid getting ideas about yeah. this, right? Whether they're, uh, whether they, they're attracted to their, their, their neighbor or their friend. What does it, what's the opposite of that? What's the advantage of, of normalizing or letting people think that the things they think are not subject to censorship and criticism, they're actual thoughts that can be examined? Yeah, well, I hate to, I hate to just be like an Instagram meme up here, no. <laughs> but I can tell you that I, wrote, I read thousands of books about straight kids and I didn't end up straight. So right. I feel like that's the opposite side of it. And, I, and, and uh, the idea that a kid would see something in a book and change their, their inherent identity because of it just isn't true. On the other hand, I think giving a kid the opportunity to say that is something that I'm experiencing that I that I don't know how to process, but now I don't feel so alone in the world. Mm -hmm. That feels incredibly important to me. And by the way, we know that when kids feel alone, when they don't see themselves, uh, it leads to all sorts of mental health issues, not doing well in school. The idea that, you know, in, in this book, the kid goes off on a journey to prove that he is the best at something right. because he thinks he needs to be better than everybody else just to be liked. And I, you know, that's a, that's a semi autobiographical, but I would say a very true experience that I had. I think, and I think a lot of LGBTQ folks have this idea that we have to be overachievers because we're lacking in some other area. And I think that's what we want to take away. Yeah. You know, we want kids to know that you are, uh, the quote that you read from the dad is one of my favorite, favorite quotes of the book, that you are indeed perfect just the way you are. You, uh, you write something in here that, that uh, reminds me of my youth. Rahul is sharing a hotel room with Jai, uh, one of the few Indian boys, uh, during a, one of the mathletes. Uh, Jai's mom has packed him, as my mother did, Indian snacks and samosas and fried banana chips and, and offers some to Rahul. Uh, he says, Jai says, don't be shy. Or wait, do you not like Indian food? He shoots me a funny look. Do you even know what these things are? Of course I do. <laughs> really? Yeah, why wouldn't I? I don't know. You just, well, you don't seem very Indian. What does that mean? I ask, not sure why I feel slightly offended. I mean, every kid has gone through this. Every kid who yeah. doesn't have white skin or has parents from another place has gone to this thing. Like, why can't I just have lunch that looks like everybody else's? But this is an identity question, right? It's not a, it's not a lunch question. It's not a snack question. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, the, what was important about that scene, and again, reflects an experience that I had, it sounds like you had growing up, where the, the need to erase my own identity mm -hmm. felt so strong that I feel like when I would meet people who had actually just moved here from India, there'd be a sense of like, you're so American. Right. <laughs> like you're actually sort of celebrating this proximity to whiteness instead of uh, celebrating this identity of, of who you are. And by the way, we were talking about this uh, on the break, but like why, why do people want to ban these kinds of books? And I think it's because, because of that celebration of identity in a way that that somehow feels uh, threatening. Whereas if we all sort of behaved in this 
you know, proximity to whiteness, people would just be like, okay. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's You're not cool. threatening anything. You're not yeah. rocking any boats. But what I love about um, my own writing, but what I love about what you what you read there was where, uh, where he feels slightly offended, too, because I think that's the rub. The rub is like, this is an identity that I want to own. It just feels dangerous to own it. You mentioned something about uh, mental health uh, yeah. in, in kids. I want to talk about the description that you use for mental health in The Best At It. The reader first sees Rahul's intrusive thoughts and his compulsions uh, when he checks his backpack and he makes sure that the front door is locked. Rahul's stress uh, increases uh, and his dad suggests that he sees a therapist. This is very unusual. Uh, quote, everybody's brain is different, but it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. And Rahul, I think it can help you understand why you're doing it and help you to learn how to make it better. I swallow, swallow, my body relaxes a bit, just knowing that someone might understand, that I might not be the only person in the world who feels this way. This is a universal. It's becoming increasingly more prevalent amongst kids. Got nothing to do with uh, being Indian or being an immigrant. It's got to do with feeling heard as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen. I put um, I put Rahul's uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors into the book because it's something that I struggle with. And as a 12 year old, I would every night, every night before bed, I would uh, check every door lock, every window in the house. It would take me like a half an hour. It was a right. ritual, and I was really, really good at hiding it. Uh, in fact, I don't think my parents had any idea at the time. You're just casually walking around the house. Yeah, you know. I, but by the way, that was part of the anxiety of it. Is like, hope I hope nobody catches me. I hope nobody catches me. And so uh, I gave Rahul that because I also feel like. You know, this book is so much about the things that we're not talking about that need to be talked about. And I think mental health around young people is a huge thing. And when I visit schools now, teachers often say, I think, you know, similar to what you just said, that it's on the rise. Now, I don't, I don't study this, so you know, I don't know if that's because mental, uh, mental health issues are on the rise or kids are more open about it or teachers are more aware to look for it, but what I do hear consistently is we're still not really talking about mm -hmm. it. And so this, the thing where the dad offers him an opportunity to go see a therapist, uh, I also love that scene in the book because the dad is not good at that conversation. Right. There's a lot of fidgeting, there's a lot of, you know, um, I'm not sure how to talk to you. But why I think that's important is because I feel like it's important to have the conversation, even if you're not sure how it's going to go. And I think that's a, uh, something that hopefully parents also will get out of this book. You also uh, cover bullying. Brent yeah. is the bully in the book. And the bullying is actually tied to Brent continually trying to out Rahul as gay. Right, right. Um, Bullying is something that I experienced as a kid. Uh, um, I now am, am the chair and co-founder of an uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander anti-bullying nonprofit called Act to Change. Uh, part of what I think happens with kids around identity, especially in middle school, is the need to, to, to be accepted, the need to fit in. And so the bully, the voice telling you, you know what? you are not going to fit in just for being you, that's, I think, that's, that's Rahul's drive, you know, and, and, in, and in a way, I think the Brent character, I wanted to give him nuance, you know, I've learned through anti-bullying work that we don't like to label kids as bullies because we want to give them the opportunity to change, mm -hmm. and that behavior is learned from somewhere, by the way, maybe parents who want to ban books, right. <laughs> but, but that behavior is learned from somewhere, and so Brent, too, has his own struggles in this book with the, with an overbearing father, the need to succeed himself, uh, and there's a moment towards the end of the book where we see Brent really, really freak out at the support that Rahul's getting, and I think that that is because he's aware that this, this sort of world order is kind of shifting, you know, and, and of course it's in very middle grade terms, yep. but, but that, oh, like, maybe this thing that I was holding on to is not actually the thing to hold on to anymore. And that feels terrifying to him. And I, I think want, that's good. I want people to read yeah. it, so I'm not going to give it away. But yeah. uh, there's a big part here about Rahul's coming out to his parents, which I think is, is uh, going to be helpful to all parents. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us about it. Thanks for the books. And of course, the succeeding book, uh, Nikhil Out Loud. Uh, Malik Pancholi is an actor and author. He's the uh, subject of today's Velshi Band book club feature. The best at it is his uh, debut novel. That